So today we have here the Cooler Master Master Gel Pro Thermal Paste. Now if you don't know what a thermal paste is, you should probably check out this link. If you have already seen this video or if you already know what a thermal paste is, let's get right into this. Now the Master Gel Pro is from the Master Gel series which has a regular variant at 5 watts per meter kelvin, a pro variant at 8 watts per meter kelvin which I have here and the maker variant which is the highest variant in the series at 11 watts per meter kelvin. Now these units may not make much sense. What you have to understand is that the higher the number, the higher the efficiency of the thermal paste and the faster or the better it will be at dissipating heat or transferring heat from the IHS or the internal heat spreader of the CPU to the heat sink of the air cooler or the water block of an AIO or water cooler. Alright, so let's open this up. On the back here we have a marked area and let's just open it up. Okay, so we get probably an instruction of some sort here. Yep, it does have some instruction on how to use this product and some other text which I'm not going to read now. Alright, so we have an instruction manual and the grease cleaner here. Okay, and what's the product? Okay, so this is it. This is the Master Gel Pro and I think there's about 1.5 milliliters of thermal paste inside it. Here we have a cap to secure it. And now as seen here, the tip is broad as well as flat. This design might also help in the application of the thermal paste. Okay, so let's check it out. Let's apply this thermal paste. And fortunately, I have a bench board here ready to apply. Let's close this up, move this away and and here we have our bench board. Let's take off the stock cooler that comes with this processor. Underneath we have a Ryzen 1600 and this is the Wraith Spire cooler. Okay, so let's remove it. Now as with any Ryzen coolers, you probably want to follow the unscrewing or the screwing in a diagonal direction. A diagonal screwing in order is preferred so that equal mounting pressure is applied at all places. This is also applicable while removing the screws from the mounting plate. Alright, so now we have the stock cooler of this mounting plate and what you see here is a thin layer of the previously applied thermal paste. Now the thermal paste which is seen here is not the stock thermal paste which comes with the cooler but this was something which I had applied earlier when I recently reassembled this PC. This is just a cheap thermal paste found in the local hardware store. Okay, so let's just wipe this off and get both surfaces ready for a fresh repaste. Alright, so now we have both the surfaces prepared and let's apply the thermal paste onto the IHS of the Ryzen CPU. Now this is a popular topic for debate on how to apply the thermal paste. While some of them may argue that a pea-sized amount of thermal paste is enough, others may prefer a cross or a line. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and just put on a small line since this tube already has a broader and flat tip. Okay, I do think I have applied more than I should have, but let's just see how it turns out. Now while mounting, you can either mount with the AMD text on the side of the RAM or on the opposite side of the RAM. Now I prefer to mount on the opposite side of the RAM so that the RAM and the text does not come in contact. Now as seen here, we just place this right on top of the mounting plates and as mentioned earlier, we will be screwing this in in a diagonal manner. So first on the left top corner and then on the right bottom corner. Now once one pair of diagonal is done, we move on to the next pair. Now once all the screws have completely gone inside, we do not have to apply any more pressure so that it can be tightened. I think this might be the perfect pressure for mounting 
and let's boot up. That's very impressive. We are actually running at just 23.5 degrees Celsius. This is about a 10 to 15 degrees Celsius drop in the ideal temperature of Ryzen 1600. Earlier using my cheaper thermal paste, I was getting somewhere around 35 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius for ideal temperatures. And now it has dropped to just 23.3 degrees Celsius at present. And I have to say, this is the least idle temperature that I have ever gotten on any PC ever. This is actually pretty surprising and, and I'm excited to do some benchmarks on this PC right now. Alright, so let's just get right into the benchmarks. Here are the results. So I did a bit of Cinebench R15, Cinebench R23 and Jigbench 5. This might be confusing as compared to the initial excellent ideal temperature which were way above expectations. I suspect this was primarily due to the heatsink being exposed to the air conditioned room at 18 degrees Celsius for a couple hours. Once this was eliminated and the PC ran for a while, the expected ideal temperature were observed. As seen in the chart, the ideal temperature, while not in the lower 20s, still shows a respectable improvement of 4 to 5 degrees Celsius over the previous generic thermal paste I had bought from a local store. As for the rest of the tests, except Jigbench 5, there was an average of around 5 degrees Celsius drop in temperature again for minimal effort and just a simple repaste. Now, Jigbench 5 behaved weirdly and did increase the temperature by about 5 degrees, but I'm not certain what could have caused it. It is likely to be some anomaly or carelessness in my test conditions since rest of the tests showed similar trends. Now coming to the effect of this low temperature on the performance, Cinebench R23 did show a decent 8% performance improvement on paper, while not exactly noticeable in usage. As for the rest of the test, they were more or less within the margin of error. This is to be expected since the Raid Spire cooler is sufficient to hold on its own against the Ryzen 1600. And there was a case of thermal throttling to begin with. So despite the temperature improvement, it doesn't necessarily mean performance improvement as well. But on the brighter side, if you are into overclocking, this would give you about 5 more degrees of thermal headroom to play with. Final thoughts. Now that you have seen how this thermal pace performs, you might be wondering whether it's worth the investment. Especially considering the fact that a cheap generic thermal pace cost about 50 rupees and this thermal paste cost about 450 rupees which is about 8 times more than what a cheap generic thermal paste costs. So what's the difference and why should you prefer a proper thermal paste designed especially for your PC instead of a cheap generic one? Well, I will give you a few reasons. Number one, these thermal pastes they are designed especially for computers which means that these are much more likely to be electrically non-conductive which means even if you smudge or smear a bit of this thermal paste around the circuit board or the other electrical components, you have a bit less chance of short circuiting or damaging your electrical components. Number two, these do not solidify, which means that these thermal pastes do not get dried off after a certain period of time. So you won't really have to repaste or change the thermal paste again anytime soon. Also, since it does not dry out during your next repaste, it will be much more convenient and easier to remove the existing thermal paste. Number three, now obviously, this thermal paste offers much better thermal performance than your cheap generic thermal paste. Which means that, even though it offers only a decrease of 5 degrees Celsius, in the world of computers, the 5 degrees Celsius definitely matters. And also, it is simply always better to keep your computer running at a lower temperature. So I guess that's about it. That's about the Cooler Master Master Gel Pro and I guess I have covered most of its aspects. If you have any doubts, let me know in the comment section below and if you have any other queries or feedbacks, feel free to share them as well. So if you like this video, feel free to leave a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel and also push that bell notifications if you would like to be notified the next time I drop a video. So that's about it, until next time.